See you at 
Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord God Almighty. We are here. We greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, whom knowing is life eternal. We are here. This is the power of prayer. We just want to pray for you. We came here to pray for you this morning. And so we want to challenge you that as we are commencing this uh, live stream, we pray that we, we ask you that you send your prayer request if you have a prayer. And we sense that this is the time for prayer this is the time for prayer and because the prayer will bring about a, a new direction it will also uh, open new streams of refreshment so we want to challenge you wherever you are whatever you're experiencing go, begin to send your prayer request live we will pick it up and we'll pray for you there's not going to be any postpone, postponement we will pray for you we said that this is the power of prayer and we believe in the power of prayer we believe in the power of prayer we believe in the power of prayer beloved the gospel we are preaching is the gospel of power and the Bible says Paul actually says he says I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation of, of, to everyone who believes that's Romans 1 verse 16 that's what Paul is saying he says I'm not ashamed of this gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes and to the Jew first and also to the Greek now this is the power of prayer we are coming here to pray and we believe the Lord with you and for you that whatever that you are experiencing, you are going to see God's hand and uh, coming through you. God's hand assisting you, taking everything that is uh, oppressing, everything that is coming against you. The Lord is going to show forth himself uh, as mighty and powerful. Remember we said here last week uh, on Tuesday as we were praying on this power of prayer, we said that uh, just like Elijah, we can also pray and God can answer our prayers now we said that prayer has dunamis it has the power prayer has dunamis it has the power it has potential power but it's also having actual power there is a possibility that can make things to happen through prayer but there is also an actual power which compels things to happen so we want you to get ready we want to get you to get ready we will be praying for you and the good Lord will bless you. We will be praying for you. And the good Lord will bless you. I'm going to ask them to just to do for me. Open, open, open the floodgates of heaven. Open those floodgates over above all. Uh, open open those floodgates uh, and op open those gates wide let them be open we we, we believe the lord to open uh, and and begin uh, to touch people's lives uh, and begin to do great things upon uh, people's lives so we are waiting for you to send your prayer and and we'll be going to uh, to the scripture in the book of uh, 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 psalms chapter number 56 uh, we will be going to psalms chapter number 56 uh, as they are uh, uh, doing this song you send your prayer request 
you get your Bible, we will be, read the word uh, and the good Lord will bless you. So we are going to minister uh, the word of the Lord on the title that says, uh, turning the enemy back, turning the enemy back. That's what we are going to be uh, speaking to you about, turning that enemy back, turning that enemy back and the good Lord bless you. Thank you, sir. Open the blood. Thank you, Jesus. And cause your rain to fall on me. Open the flag. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. In a battle and cause your rain to fall on me. Open the flag. Oh, glory, 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 glory. In the darkness and cause the rain. Oh, yes. To fall on me. Hey, Baba. Thank you, Jesus. Baba. Psalms chapter number 56. We'll be going to verse number 1 through to 4, and then we'll jump to verse number 8 through to 11. We are speaking on the caption that says this morning. As we are preparing to pray for you. Turning the enemy back. We need to turn the enemy back. We need to command the enemy. And turn him back. His way. And flee from us. Because we are able. Because we are able. Because we are able. Oh hallelujah. Psalm 56. 1. Through to 4. And then we'll jump to verse number 8 to 11. Can a believer be afraid? That's the question I want to start asking you. And maybe perhaps let me put it this way. Does a believer need to be afraid? And if your answer is no, what if they are afraid? What if it happens that a believer become, becomes or gets afraid? Uh, we need to understand that fear 
is part of the fallen nature. Human beings are susceptible to fear. No matter how powerful they can be, they are all susceptible to fear. Because fear is part of the fallen nature. You will remember in the incident of the old in the garden that the first man feared after the deception and disobedience that came upon them through Satan. So a human being is susceptible to fear. But tonight, today I want you to understand that, uh, that what is this fear is what an individual trust. What an individual put trust on is the very thing that will ease your fear. What does it mean? Does that mean there is no fear? No, that, it does not mean there is no fear. But it means when one is fearful and is afraid, that fear needs to release one's ability to trust. And that's why I came here this morning to talk to you. That the intention is to point you to the two important things. The predominant factor over fear and the expression of trust. That's what I came to reveal to you. That it is okay, you can be fearful. Or oh, your nature is a, near, it's a fearful nature. Human nature is the nature that fears. But we need to understand what happens when our nature fears. What happens when this nature reveals fear? What must we do? What must we do? What must we do? We need to understand that there is a predominant factor over fear. And the second thing that we'll reveal to this morning is the expression of trust. And all of, all, all we'll close with the consequence, the result of applying those two principles. Psalm 56 verse number 1 through 4, it reads as follows. Be gracious to me, O God, for man trembles on me all day long and attacker oppresses me. My enemies tremble on me all day long. For many attack me proudly. When I'm afraid, I put trust or I put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise. In God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Verse number 8. You have kept count of my tossings and put my tears in your bottle are they not in your book then my enemy will turn back in the day when i call this i know that the god that god is for me in god whose word i praise in the lord whose word i praise in god i trust I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Beloved, this is the psalm of a man. One of the greatest figures in the Bible. David. And if you want to get this incident, how the psalm was sang by this man David, you will have to follow the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 21. From verse number 1 to 15. That's the book that you need to the chapter that you need to get to and you will read those verses and you'll begin to get the background of this this uh, psalm that which David said now we are told in first Samuel chapter number 21 verse number 7 there that David was spotted at the place called the Nob and one of the servants of Saul was there and he spotted David this servant of Saul Dweg the Atomite who then reported the matter about the whereabouts of David to Saul. Then it made David to decide to run away because he was running away from Saul. Now the spy of Saul spotted David. And when David was spotted, we are told that David then ran away uh, to a place called the Gath. But before he ran away, he asked the chief or the priest at Nob, asking the priest that is there any sword? Can you give me a sword? Is there any sword that I can take with me as I'm leaving from this place? 
And the priest said to David, David, there is no sword. The only sword that is here is the sword of the man that you have slaughtered, of the man that you have killed, the Goliath. It is the sword that has been kept. It has been clothed and wrapped with the ephod. It's there. This is the only sword that is here. You can take it. Now, that is 1 Samuel 22, verse number 9. You will get that information from that verse. David took that sword and we told him he ran away. He's going to the place called the Gath. Now, Gath, if you remember, is the place, the hometown of the man called the Goliath. Is the city of the Philistines. Now, David ran away and went there. In his mind, David is thinking that maybe they are not going to recognize him. He's running away from Saul. And when he was running away from Saul, having the sword of Goliath, he found himself in the place now called a Gath. And in chapter number 21, verse number 8 and 9, that's when he took that sword running away. Now he entered the place God called Gath. Now when he enter them we are told that he's also being recognized by the person called uh, Akisha who was the king there or he was a leader of that place in Gaza. now David was recognized and when David was recognized I'm reading verse number 11 of first Samuel chapter number 21 first Samuel chapter number 21 verse number 11 it reads as follows and the servant of Akisha said to him is is not this David the king of the land. David did not sing to one another. Did they not sing to one another of him in tenses? Saul has struck down his thousands, and David is ten thousand. And David took these words to heart and was much afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So he changed his behavior before them and pretended to be insane in the hands and made marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle run down through his beard now that's what we are told that when David was recognized by Akisha he then changed the behavior he pretended as if he was insane I don't know have you ever been in a situation where you feel like I have been running from one place to another I have run to a place where there is nowhere to run David found himself in a position that he cannot run anymore but he had to stay there he had to come up with some means he did not run anymore because he was running away from Saul and when he was running away from Saul now here is Akisha he had to run away from Akisha we are told that that right there he realized that there is nowhere to run have you ever been in a situation where you even forget your heroic experiences because David as he was before these people of Gath he had the sword of Goliath and that sword was something that we could have set up it is the testimony of David of what he did, of his achievements, of his accomplishment. Now he had experiences of how it is to slaughter a champion. But have you ever found yourself in a position, even your testimonies does not help anymore. Even your past accomplishments does not help any longer. Even the things that you found yourself achieving in the past, they are no longer now useful. David was in the situation where there was no Nowhere to run, where the sword of Goliath was not sufficient for him to defend himself against Achish, against the Philistines. We are told that David, right there, decided to change his behavior. He decided to change his behavior. He became insane. And right now, I want to ask him to understand that David, he realized that here there is nowhere to go. I can go no way here there is nowhere to go i just have to come up with means i just have to come up with a plan david we are told he was afraid the bible says the bible says he was so much 
afraid. He was so much afraid. Like I said to you, that to be afraid, it's part of the fallen nature. It is part of human nature. Human beings are susceptible to fear and being afraid. But there is something that you need to understand. When you are confronted with the fear, when you are confronted with deadly situations, when you are confronted with deadly pestilence, the same way we are confronted and today with the pestilence, the same way we are confronted in this time with this pestilence. I came to say to you, I know that as a human being, you can fear, you can be afraid of the pestilence. I want to tell you, beloved, that last night or during the day, last day, yesterday, I had so many calls, people calling me sending messages Ruti please pray because you know what I have just tested positive someone calling Ruti pray my children does not want to go to school because they are afraid of this thing Ruti pray this is what is happening my wife is in this situation somebody calling it was a call after call people were declaring and I could sense even in the voices of these people that they are afraid and I said Lord it is alright it is normal to be afraid it is human to be afraid it is okay to be afraid but there is something that I want us to address that when you are afraid there are two things there are two factors that we pick up from this scripture one is the predominant factor over fear what should I do when I'm afraid what must I do when I'm afraid what do I have to do when I'm afraid I know powerful people can be afraid David was afraid David was a warrior David was a man who confronted lions lion and destroyed it he dealt with a bear David was a man who had accomplishments. David but was a king already, was anointed by God. But even when David was as great as he was, we are told he was afraid. We are told he was afraid and he changed the behavior. Now David tells us that in his changing the behavior, he behaved and as a person who was an insane, who was mad, who lost his mind. I can imagine because David was a great man but this time around David was alone he was no longer followed by soldiers this time around David realized that this situation that I find myself in it's deadly, it's dangerous David realized that what I'm going through I don't have soldiers I don't have men who are surrounding me who are following me I'm lonely and I'm left alone it's dangerous I'm afraid that I might die I know right now as you are watching as you are viewing you are afraid that maybe you might contract this because your spouse contracted it maybe you might contract this because your colleague is positive I know you are afraid maybe I'm gonna die maybe I'm not gonna come out of this situation it's fine to be afraid but I want to say to you when you are afraid there is a predominant factor over fear there is something that is powerful that is more dominant than the fear you have David he was afraid and when he was afraid he changed his behavior the Bible says he began to be insane it was like he was drooling like an infant he was drooling like an infant he was afraid and he thought you know what I have nothing to do here I must just drool like an infant and behave like a madman and write on the gates and let them look at me 
and they asked themselves what is happening David they were scratching the gate as he was scratching the gate the Bible tells us that he sent the psalm David was singing the psalm and the psalm he was singing he was behaving as a madman he was behaving as an insane man but there was a song inside of him he was saying oh God be gracious to me oh God he was drooling but he was saying oh God be gracious to me I came to say to you I don't know your situation that has made you afraid this morning maybe you are drooling like a like David maybe you also you realize that there is nowhere to go you don't know what to do you don't know what to do you find yourself doing things that seems not to be normal but let me tell you even when you are going through that let there be a song inside of you oh God be gracious to me David was scratching the gates as he was scratching the gates the song was inside of him the song was going on inside of him we are told that the Psalm 56 is the song that he sang right there in Gath. And as we are singing the song, he sings this way. He says, when I'm afraid, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Oh, beloved, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. When I'm fearful, I put my trust in you. The predominant factor of fear, it is to realize, what do you do when you are afraid? What do you do when you are afraid? Who do you go to when you are afraid? Who do you rely on when you are afraid? Who is your trustee when you are afraid? David said, when I'm afraid, I put my trust on you. When I'm afraid, I'm surrounded by enemies. Be gracious to me. Oh God Almighty, the people are taking me. Be gracious to me. There are so many attackers. There are so many attackers that are coming against me. Be gracious to me. There are so many attackers coming against me. Be gracious to me. And he said, when I'm afraid, when I'm afraid, I put my trust on you, oh God. I came to say to you, when you are afraid, you need to realize it is the right time to put your trust on God. When you are afraid, it is the right time to put your trust on God. Don't behave and seem like you are not afraid. I know you are a man of God. I know you are a powerful person. But when you are afraid, for your children uh, that they are going out uh, and maybe and maybe I want to say to you when you are afraid uh, put your trust on God he said when I'm afraid I put my trust on God he's the object of my trust He's the one I trust. He's the one I look to. He's the one I depend on. He's the one I rely on. I want to say to you, David's enemies were people. Satan has agents of enemies. Or agents that he uses as to be, to be the enemy of the people. And one of the agents of Satan is sickness. And truth be told, this sickness has caused so much fear. It has caused so much fear to so many people. But I came to say to you, Satan means some of the means of Satan or agents that he uses in sicknesses. You will recall Luke chapter number 13, verse number 16, about this woman who was bent over for 18 years. The Bible says it was because of the doing of Satan. You will remember that when God anointed Jesus, he said, I'm anointing you to go all over the place, to go about villages and cities, doing good, healing the people who were oppressed by demons, by Satan, by the devil. I came to say to you, the devil today will turn back from you. That's what we came to declare. We are turning back the devil from you. Now here is what Saul and David did. 
as he faced this enemy. And this is what we need to do when we have faced this enemy called coronavirus. David, when you have faced, was faced this and was faced by this enemy. David said, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Now to trust God is the predominant factor over fear. To trust God or God as the object of your trust is a predominant factor over fear. This is what David says. He says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. But I say this day, as we enter the second point, that David... He did not just trust them with lip service. He put up his action to the trust. He expressed them. What is he to trust them? And he says in verse number 8, this is what he says. He says, you have kept count of my tossings. You have put my tears in your book. Are they not in your book? David was saying, Father, thank you that you have my records. Thank you that you know. Thank you that you are aware of how many times I cry in the night. That you are aware or how many times I am in pain and I'm in more bleeding inside God you are aware he kept the record of the tears in the bottle they are recorded in the book and David continued to say he says that then my enemy will turn back in the day when I call oh my enemy will turn back in the day when I call now David realized that a trust can be expressed through calling you can express trust through calling that is why we said to you send your prayer request because we want to express our trust to God through calling we will be calling on God and as we call on God he will will answer us we are going to pray for you the expression is to call and on the day my enemies then my enemies will turn back up in the day I call on God in the day I call to call it means to pray now to pray is an expression of trust you cannot pray if you don't trust I don't know about you when I was growing up there were people those will come to me when they are afraid and they say hey, my gents, I'm afraid and my gents will arise and my gents will do it they had trust on my gents but I came to say to you my gents is dead today you need to look up unto Jesus it is when we call and as we call we express our trust you cannot say you trust without calling anybody now when you call somebody you call somebody to help you you are saying i'm afraid but the people they will look at who you are calling they they're not gonna be afraid at all times you call and calling anyone there are those, there are those people as a young person when they can say i'm going to call brahmama you will know that Brahmama, Brahmama does not play. When they say, I'm calling this one, they say, ah, that one you can call him. I'm, I'm not afraid of it. But when you say Brahmama, they change their mind. They make a U-turn. Now today is the day we are going to call. We are not calling Brahmama. We are not calling Brahmama. We are not calling Sangoma. We are not calling people. We are not calling Muti. We are not calling on tangible things. We are calling on the one who is the creator of the heaven and earth. The enemy will not turn back from you unless you decide to call. Unless you decide to call. Unless you decide to call, beloved. Unless you decide to call. Oh, my Are there people who are ready to call? If you are ready to call, you can write that prayer request right now. You are saying with that prayer request, I'm ready to, this is my call. The devil is not afraid of you when you are silent. 
the devil will turn back from you when you begin to say I'm ready to call as I'm closing now David is revealing to us right here that when he said the day when I call then my enemies will turn back from me that is why as he was drooling they did not know that this man is drooling but he's calling Jehovah he's calling the Lord he's like he's mad but he's calling Jehovah he's telling us he says I was afraid I was afraid of Akish I killed their champion man I killed their champion Goliath was a great man in the Philistines and Akish might destroy me and then you don't know David says when the day when I called Akish we are told that he was coming and when they brought this man David to Akish and Akish looked at him and David went on and drooling da, 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 da. They did not know and that he's not a man. He's calling on God. Perhaps when they were looking at that sword of Goliath, they thought, man, this one is a madman. Now, Akish, the king of the Philistines, came and said to these people, Do I not have many mad persons here in the Philistines? Why do you bring me another mad man? Take this man out of my face. Akish was turning back. I came to say to you, Corona will turn back. Just like Akish was turning back. The day when I call, the day when I call, the enemy turned back. Today, we are ready to call. The day when I call, the enemy came back, went back his way. And I say to you, that we are ready to call. The Bible says, the enemy, when you call, when you call, God will cause the enemy who came against you in one way, he will flee from you in seven directions. The day when you call, the enemy will turn back. The day when you start praying, the enemy will turn back. The day you start praying, the enemy will turn back. I came to say to you, when you start calling, we are turning back the devil. We are turning that bad devil from your health. When you start calling, you are turning that bad devil back from your health. I therefore pray, appear my over. You say, mm, turn that enemy back from my breakthroughs, from my financial breakthroughs, from my spiritual breakthroughs. Right now we pray, Lord, for my over appear that the enemy of lack, that the enemy of poverty, that the enemy of stagnancy, that the enemy of plateau, that the enemy that makes him uh, to be stagnant. Uh, right now, uh, we command the devil, uh, turn the back up uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we call on Jesus. Uh, we are turning the enemy back up uh, through our prayers. Uh, we are turning the enemy back up uh, through the prayers. Uh, uh, right now, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, every lack uh, that is in Abia's life, uh, right now, uh, Turn back uh, to where you're coming from. Uh, turn back uh, to your pit of hell. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we are praying for you. Uh, somebody say, uh, Muruti, pray for me. Uh, I am, uh, I tested positive. Uh, I pray right now. Uh, that demon of Corona will decree and declare. Turn back. Uh, you call on Jesus. Uh, turn back. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we are turning that enemy of coronavirus uh, out of your health. Uh, we turn it back. Uh, in in the name of Jesus to where it's coming from we send it back up to where it's coming from right now right here today in the name of Jesus turn back up in the mighty name of Jesus turn back up in the name of Jesus we are turning it back keep on saying sending those prayers we are turning it back right now in the name of Jesus we are turning it back in the name of Jesus you are turning it back uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm checking other platforms uh, where you have sent your prayer request. Uh, but right now, uh, not every person uh, who say emotionally, I'm shattered. Uh, emotionally, I'm, I'm, I'm in tatters. Uh, right now, we declare uh, and declare. We call enemy, we call on God and turn that enemy back in the name of Jesus. What are you waiting for? 
we turn that enemy back up in the name of Jesus. We turn that enemy back up in the name of Jesus. We turn that enemy back up in the name of Jesus. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I'm getting another messenger now. We are turning that enemy back up in the name of Jesus. We turn that enemy back up right now. We decree and declare the people of God are being set free today from fear. The devil is leaving you right now in the name of Jesus. The devil is leaving you right now in the name of Jesus. The devil is leaving you right now in the name of Jesus. And right now today is the day to turn that devil back up. It's the day to turn the enemy back up. There is power as you call on God to turn that devil back up. In the name of Jesus, the enemy that is operating in the health of your family, right now we declare and declare upon that enemy, be turned back up in the name of Jesus. Be turned back up in the name of Jesus. Be turned back up in the name of Jesus. Be turned back up in the name of Jesus. We turn you back right now in the name of Jesus. We turn you back right now in the name of Jesus. We turn you back right now in the name of Jesus. Are we declare? and declare spirit of the living God here are your people oh God they decide to call on you and as they call on you let that devil be turned back up let that enemy be turned back up let that enemy the virus be turned back up from our family members let that enemy be turned back up from our family members right now in the mighty name of Jesus we turn that enemy back up from our family members in the mighty name of Jesus we decree and declare right now that every devil that is harassing the people of God every demon harassing the people of God every sickness every corona every virus in the blood of the children of God we decree and declare today we are calling on God turn back up in the name of Jesus we turn you back up name of Jesus we turn you back up in the name of Jesus we turn you back up you demon of virus that is arresting our economy we turn you back up in the name of Jesus you demon of the virus that is tormenting our children we turn you back up in the name of Jesus we turn you back up in the name of Jesus we declare right now we turn back up in the name of Jesus they turn back in the name of Jesus. They turn back in the name of Jesus. They turn back in the name of Jesus. O maneka tela mo shata. O darara mo sekele mo. O ramake tela baya. O darara darara mo sete. Rika tela baya. The enemy was coming for you. Is turning back today. The enemy was coming for you. Is turning back. Was coming for your success. Is turning back. Was coming for your marriage. Is turning back. That enemy is turning back. Was coming for your your children is turning back up what's going for your finances that enemy is turning back up i'm declaring to you right now the enemy is turning back up the moment you decide to call the day when i call the enemy turn back up in the name of jesus we decree and declare right now you devil turn back up in seven directions you devil get out in the name of jesus every person who's suffering mental sicknesses we decree and declare right now be loosed from the clutches of Satan, be loosed up from demonic powers in the name of Jesus. Be lost, be lost, be lost, be lost. 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 We turn that enemy back from your house. It's returning. He was we ready to destroy you. But today we say let him turn back up in the name of Jesus. That devil is turning back up from you as you call on God. The day you decide to call up is the day you will flee. The day you decide to command up is the day you will flee. Where the creator now. All the people that have sent private messages, 
God. Save their spouses. Save their family members. Have contracted the disease. I present them before you, Lord. Let the enemy turn back up from those who I see you watch upon the household of faith, upon the children of God. Every demon that was aiming for the lives of the children of God, we turn them back in the name of Jesus through prayer. We turn them back in the name of Jesus. Turn back in the powerful name of Jesus. We declare and declare all forces of darkness that meant to destroy us. We declare right now, let it be turned back. Every force of darkness controlling the government, let it be turned back. Every force of darkness controlling political leaders, let it turn back. Every force of government that is controlling the local government people, let it turn back. In the name of Jesus, that enemy must turn back right now. We declare and declare, he's turning back. 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 The enemy is turning back from you. The enemy is turning back from your family. The enemy is turning back from your children. The enemy is turning back from your health. The enemy is turning back away from you. We are sending him back from where he's coming from. In the mighty name of Jesus. He says, this I know that God is for me. I might be seen as an insane person, but this I know that God is for me. When I'm afraid, I need to understand that trust on God or trust in God is a predominant factor over fear. And the moment you start calling, the day when I called on God is the day I was afraid. You need to have that day where you say I can no longer rely on the pace on my speed of running away you have run away from so many things the day you say I will no longer rely on the sword that I took from the hand of a slain Goliath. The day you say when I put my trust in God. Is the day the enemy will turn back from you. The day you decide. 
They sought my achievements, my victories are useless before the Lord. The day you decide I will rely. On God is the day the enemy will turn back from you. Somebody is saying, I'm calling, I've been praying to stop using Moody's and witchcraft. So sometimes I feel like I'm not praying enough. Here is a prayer that David prayed. Whoever you are, we are praying that you are going to see breakthrough and you will no longer be bound by those forces of motives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We pray for you, Cooper. You say, I'm really in need of prayers. We do not know your heart desire. But this is the prayer we are releasing to you. The day you decide to call on God, the enemy will turn away from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you as you are sending that prayer request. That God Almighty will turn the enemy. They were just coming for you. And mysteriously, they will not attack you. The same way it happened to David. A man perceived to be man. I came to challenge you. That this is your day. In the name of Jesus. We pray for you. You say pray for my mom and my dad. We are praying for them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that God Almighty will see them through whatever they believe God for that is in the will of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we tell we pray for you. We pray for you. A day when I call the enemy tent. For this I know that God is for me. In God I put my trust in God I put my trust as David was truly saliva running all over him stretching the place he is telling us that he sent the song be gracious to me oh God in the midst of these enemies they are trembling all over me I don't know where to go it is Saul coming from this other side it is Akish and the Philistines on the other side. I don't know what to do. But today we pray that you also, the same way David saw God's intervention, you will see the intervention of God. And your life will never be the same again. I know you are afraid of this pandemic. It's okay. When you are afraid, don't die in fear. Call on God and he will deliver you from the attack of the evil one. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you as you will be sending those prayer requests on messenger or on Facebook. I will be going on messenger to pray for you. You send them on Facebook. I pray for you on messenger. And the good Lord will bless you. You say, I need prayers. I decided to call. I decided to call. And the good Lord will bless you. We're going to leave it here today. Knowing that in the midst of our fearness, when we feed, we experience God turning back the enemy once we put our trust on him. Just know that trust is the predominant factor over fear. But also know that trust can be expressed through prayer, through calling. 
And as you call, he turns the enemy back from you. I see the enemy turning back, Sammy. He's turning back from our families. He's going far. He's leaving our families alone. The enemy is turning. God is turning the enemy away from our children. God is taking the family away. The, the, the enemy away from our families. We pray for you. That you also you will see that. That the enemy will turn away from your health. Will turn away from your finances. Will turn away from your marriage. Will turn back from your children. Will go. Will go. And the Lord will do you well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are there, you say, I know that it's not for me. I don't know him. I cannot even call him. We'd like to pray with you and for you. That you can call and say, save me. He will save you. If you are that person, follow me with this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, my life is naked. It's vulnerable the destruction of Satan, the enemy. But today, I surrender my life unto you. I pray, have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. Wash my sins away. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you. I bless you. And I glorify your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm, I pray. I'm the child of God. I'm born again. I'm blood washed. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Father, I speak a blessing upon all your children. Those who send their prayers. And those who are yet to. The prayers you have answered already. We say receive that glory. We ascribe glory to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you shalom, peace. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. The day when I call, the enemy will turn back. God will turn the enemy back from me. In Jesus' name, amen. Victory belongs to me. Victory belongs.